Architects and architecture students always need things to look amazing, but they never have time. So I'm gonna help you make your plans look amazing in less than 10 minutes. I'm Mooch, and this is Pigeon Head Architecture. So this is a model that I've been working on just for fun. You're gonna notice that I don't have too much furniture, which I recommend you put in all your plans and, and elevations and sections, uh, just cause it makes things look more realistic and makes it look better. Um, but I usually do all that stuff in Lumion. So we're gonna be working today with templates, right? The, the important thing about templates is that using a template means that you're gonna do the work one time and then you can apply that template to every single plan and it's all gonna look consistent and it's gonna look nice. So the first thing that I did is here on the floor plan, I created a new template and I make columns and walls uh, with, uh, I give them a dark hatch. You can give them color if you want, you can make them um, black, but I usually go with a gray or, or a light gray. And we're doing that for the walls, we're doing that for the columns. And then something that I like to do is I like within the template to add shadows and ambient shadows. But you're gonna notice when you usually put shadows, it makes everything look really dark and doesn't look nice. So we go down into the shadow, we go down into the shadows and we make them um, just lighter, just so that they're there for reference and you can get a little bit of depth in your plans. Another thing that I like to do is I like to get the model display and I switch it to realistic. And once we do that, everything gets very saturated with color. So we'll tone down the, the saturation a little bit. You see everything looks really dark and really gray. Um, that also has to do because in this moment in time, I don't have any material. Like I said, I do that all in Lumion, but for the purpose of this example, I'm gonna show you how I do it. Now, if you see my other videos, I'll show you exactly how to make custom materials, which you're gonna always wanna do. Um, and this concrete panel material is the one that we created in, in our last video. Um, so that right there starts giving it texture. And that's good, that starts making your plans look really nice. It's too much concrete. This model isn't made to show as a as a diagrammatic plan, so that's why it looks really heavy on concrete, and we'll change that in a minute. But something I like to do is add uh, plants. Now, Revit is notorious for having the ugliest trees, and I'll show you how to do a little trick on that, on the elevations, to make them look a little bit more diagrammatic. But we'll go ahead and we'll put trees all throughout. It's a good idea to put as many trees as you can, um, especially in the back and try to design it just so that it looks like it belongs. It's not random tree placement like I'm doing here. But this gives it a context and it makes your plans look busier and it makes them look nicer. So like I said, um, I, di I didn't create custom materials for this project specifically, so I'm gonna use Revit. And that's the problem with Revit, it has the ugliest materials. But we're gonna pick one, we're gonna pick a type of wood here. And right off the bat, you can tell that the scale is really small. So that's one of the things that makes it look really ugly. If you don't wanna make your own custom materials, it's really easy. But if you don't wanna do that, that's fine. Well, you could do what I'm gonna do, which uh, I'm gonna go to the Manage tab, and then we're gonna go over to Materials, and we're gonna edit that Revit material to make it look a little bit better. And the way we do that is by adjusting the color a little bit. And in this case, we're gonna adjust the scale. Make sure that when you do this, you always go to graphics and you put uh, where it says use render appearance. And it's a good idea to give it a little bit of a pattern so it has some texture to it. And right there you can see it reads so much better. Now, because I'm using concrete, the walls, the gray that I chose, uh, it's blending in a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna make them black. And this is one of the tricks that I like to use where I play around with the exposure. 
this is a good idea if you're using a lot of materials and it, it's adding way too much color to your plans and you want to keep it a little bit more neutral. You can play around with these settings, you know, try turning down the intensity, try making it less saturated. Um, as you can see, it looks horrible with what I did. So I'm probably just going to leave it how it was before. But I'm showing you this so that if in your case you feel like it's too vibrant, there's too much colors, too much materials, like you want to differentiate what's going on, but you don't want it to be too overwhelming, then you can play around with the photographic exposure settings and spend an extra two to three minutes doing that and it's gonna look so much better. You can see that on my furniture, I don't have any material. It's always good to do the same thing. And like I said, if it's a family that you're using, you're gonna change the material one time, you're gonna spend one minute doing that and it's gonna make it look so much better. Now to show you an example how easy it is to apply the, the template, you just go to another plan you apply the template. You can see here, everything's reading uh, super dark. And that's because my second level is not really a level, it's a roof plan. So it picked up everything. I, I made it dark in the template, so I made everything dark on that roof plan. That's why it looks like that. But if you have a second level and you apply it, it's gonna read very nice. Now we're gonna do a section. I always mess these sections up because I try to do it too quickly. But we're going to place a section and I'm going to show you how to make a template for that. It's going to be pretty much the same thing. There's just a couple minor differences that I like to do. And it's good that you stick around so you can see what those differences are. So I always duplicate whatever. I take whatever template Revit gives you and I duplicate it. You could change the one that Revit gives you, but it's always a good idea just to make a copy just in case. And again, we're gonna, Revit seems to remember what I did last time, but again, you're gonna make the walls and you're gonna make the columns and the roof. You're gonna make all those gray or black, but you're gonna wanna make the floor black. That's the big difference here. By making the floor black, it really reads so much better where you're cutting through the building. And then again, you're gonna to wanna to add shadows and, and ambient shadows. And like I said, Revit remembered all this, but you're gonna to wanna to do that and you're gonna to wanna to bring down the intensity of the shadows. I, I usually put it at 15. You know, you can feel free to put it at five just to have it there for reference, but you never want it to overwhelm too much because it takes away from the architecture. And just like that, it's reading so much better. I'd probably use this as my for my final presentation. Um, people don't really like the trees on Revit. They don't really bother me too much, to be 100% honest. But one trick that you can do that's very easy and very quick is you just right click it and you go to where it says override graphics and you can make them half tone. I don't really like doing this too much because it doesn't bother me, but you can make them half tone. You can also make them transparent and that makes them look more diagrammatic. And like I said, it's really easy to apply that same template. So we're going to cut another section through our building and we're going to apply that template so you can see how quick and how easy it's done. Now, usually elevations and sections are going to be filled with all this annotation that you have from your project. I personally hide them uh, manually by right clicking and, and hit hide, but you could do this through the template as well. I'm going to show you how to do that. The reason I don't like doing that is because sometimes in some plans I do like certain annotation to show up, so I don't want to be turning that off and on all the time in the template and I don't want to have I don't want to duplicate the template and have one for annotations because it gets kind of messy so I usually hide them but the way that you're going to want to do that is you're going to open up your template and I'll show you in just a minute let me just put the, the the template on here so as you can see the section uh template it works for the elevation as well 
It's a good idea though, my honest opinion, to duplicate it and create one for sections and one for elevations because sometimes you're going to want to show different things in both or maybe different materiality in one and then in the other. But like I said, if you go into your template and you go to where it says annotation categories, you can switch off. Um, it's not elevation. Um, it's going to be levels, I think. Yeah, you're going to want to turn off your levels and you can also turn off your grids. I don't have any column grid lines, but those tend to get in the way. And if you're in school and you just want to show like a schematic plan, those things make your 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 plans look too technical sometimes. So you want to get rid of those and you do that through the template. And the cool thing about doing that is that wherever you apply it, it's going to have the same settings. and we'll apply it to to one other facade and I actually chose this facade because I have glass and as you can see that glass is looking solid right now so one last little trick that I'll show you guys you're gonna open up your template you're gonna go to the the visual overrides and or the graphic overrides and you're gonna want to uh, go to where it says curtain panel um, and you're gonna make those three you're gonna give them a transparency you can also make them a lighter color, but usually just by giving them transparency, it's enough. 40 is a little bit too much, but it's gonna be enough for the example so you can see how effective it is giving that material some transparency. You can also play around with the color of it so that it, it, it reads as a different color if you don't want it to look like that blue-green um, color. But as you can see, uh, we've done this in about 10 minutes. So if you just dedicate about one hour to your project doing this and following my other videos, your project is going to look so much better.